Thank you for Patreon now for donating to the Patreon. Hey guys, it's Vandy Azul, back in another Card Fight Vanguard deck profile. So if you guys enjoyed it, like, comment, subscribe, and subscribe. This time we are covering set 13, Brankgate B Heroes. So, oh my god, I'm not understanding why it's called B Hero. Oh my god, that's so stupid. Oh my god, I'm now understanding why they call it B Heroes. <laughs> okay, anyways, ignoring the horrible pun that is this, or the reason that I thought it was earlier when I was actually putting this together, B Hero is kind of that interesting deck where it, it basically proved my point of D, where like they them making all these different ride lines kind of allowed it to where a lot of them could get shafted very quickly, and anyone that thought of the clan argument was kind of, do we want to look at Heroes and how they got scrapped? Because, yeah, if you don't remember, Heroes were released in set six and then only got one support card i believe in either set seven or nine then com got completely forgotten except for one random promo in between set 10 and set 12 and then finally in set 13 they actually got good support and all of us were like oh my god heroes actually exist so and by the way for the record the last time i edited this slide as of this morning before i started editing it for the deck profile was actually with back in set six so just proving my point anyways i'm going to start shall we because this deck has actually changed a lot since then and it's actually really fun to play now so let's go and see what we got sorry First today we have a start in Galactic B Hero Pearly Agno. Grids over boots, 5k shields, this kid base, auto road point for one second draw card, standard star and special to free draw if you went second. There's not much more because about this also like this is just a cute child. Like none of the ride line really requires him, but I mean come on, he's such a cute little child and he has the hero name. And honestly, worst case scenario, if you find a way to get it in from drop into the um order zone, you might need every hero you can get, so just saying. So one of in the ride deck. And of course, we have our triggers, which we're on our over trigger and star dragon deed, even finitude, eldo breath, grids over boost, 50k shield, 5k power, over trigger. You melee one over trigger in your deck, or reveal it as your trigger, move that card, draw a card, choose one of your units, it gets plus one million for the turn. And if you build it during your draft check, activate its additional effect, which can double the power and critical of all formal units until end of turn. Increase the double in power, it's critical when activated. So that does also count boost of the Vanguard when it's being boosted. But um, yeah, so anyone that's ever played against Brand Gate, specifically Gravidia, probably has seen this and probably has PTSD from it because you doubled the power and critical of the entire front row. So Someone got a million and then it got doubled. Then thanks to Gravidia, that all doubled again. So I mean, all around though, Eldor Brothers are very solid over because if you pull, if you pull it in the early game, if you were preemptive enough to rush for it, which honestly this deck does kind of want to rush now in the set 13 variant, or at least the way I play it, you definitely want to pull up that over early and just force out numbers and force them to PG early. Or you pull it in the end game unless they have three PGs at the ready, they're pretty much dead. So um cool one of eldo breath you can run valnut for more consistent multi-attack but um yeah eldo breath is kind of like an fu and also just straight up says you will die to this most likely so one of especially when you have multi-attack already you know and then move on to our normal triggers. We run three crits and patrol robot decker cop. Grid zone boost, 15k shield, 4k power, critical trigger, auto rear at the end of this unit boosted. Put a soul to choose one of you, it gets 2k for the turn. Um the 2k does nothing unless like you are doing really weird things that barely hit the magic numbers. And but it does go to soul and depending on like the situations it's like one of the it's like the ways that some of my decks have been recently where if you open horribly and by horribly i mean you open every single soul blaster then you will run into a soul problem but like that requires you to hit every single soul blaster in your opening hand and for some reason you not to think that's a good idea to mulligan out of it so i mean all around though decker cop is very nice to have though it does increase the soul and it's a 2k plus power up so it's not horrible it's not amazing but uh yeah you also want crits when you're doing a bunch of multi-attack but at the same time to do that multi-attack you need hand cards and that's where the four draws come in for amletic connector grade zero boost 5k shield 4k base continuous guard circle if your opponent's vanguards are grade three gears 5k shield so 10k shield which is nice to have and it's a draw trigger so hopes increase the hand so that's good and you know it, it's just all around nice to have especially because for one of the orders to call stuff to rear guards you have to willingly drop hand cards so there's that so four of connector and then we have four fronts and it's forming heavy machinery heavy constallion so grade zero boost 15k shield 5k power standard front there's literally nothing special about it by all means, you can run extra crits if you want to. You can run extra draws to help increase hand. I found the rainbow works because I like this deck gets close enough to decking out as is, and I don't like that, so I'm going to keep the front. And then the reason why I don't just switch it for a crit, well, let's just say the front has been very helpful in terms of hitting bigger numbers with like seven attacks a turn, So or however many the last time I played this deck was. So um, yeah, four fronts, it's nice to have for the more multi-attack you have, especially like when you leave the last ones for the end. So, you know, we go rainbow with this one. And then we have four heals and alterate spirit dragon. Great zone boost, 15k shield, 5k power, standard heal, and a spell is just a free... um. 
heal you know you can run any heals you want to you could run the counter heals because you know they work very well in specific situation become 25k shields but i'd rather much have a con consistent at 15k shield rather than a fluctuating 10 to 25k shield and the reason why it's alter rate that i'm running is because it just all happened to came out in the same set as dianos did but you can run any heal you want from those you can even run the counter heals like i said i just prefer not to run the counter heals then move on to our grade ones first we're on four pgs in planet wall dragon grade zero boost uh Degrade 1, boost, and 0 shields. This is K-Base. Continue Sentinel. You may have up to 4 Sentinels in deck. I must put on Guard Circle. Choose one of mutes. It cannot be hit on a battle. And if your hand has two or more cards in it, choose a card from your hand and discard it. Standard PG. Not to specify that basically means if this and only one other card is in your hand when you place it on Guard Circle, you don't have to discard one. It's great. Because that means you can be as aggressive as you want in the early game. Which... The, depending on what your definition of early game is, it might be like for if yours is like mine where it goes up to first grade three turn, then great. This will definitely be helpful. If it's not, then eh, 50 50. Because this deck kind of wants to rush as early as possible, but not on grade one turn because you might need those grade ones for later. So uh, yeah. Four Planet Wall Dragon, very good for defending yourself when your opponent inevitably counterattacks you, especially in situations where you kind of have to be very stingy with your CB cost. Because, I mean, this deck can go like from 0 to 180 real quickly in terms of offense, but then it will like go from 0 to 180 real quickly in terms of how many resources you have left. So, Four of Planet Wall Dragon, very helpful when you're trying to, you know, manage your resources better and not die to a horrible triple crit counterattack. Then we have four copies of our most important grade one in this deck, I questionly say. Galactic B Hero Direct 4L. So grade one boost, 5k shield, AK base, auto back row rear guard center. I think this is one of the this is either the first card or one of the first few cards in D that specifically required no wait, that was Trick Moon. Trick Moon was the first one. Or like the first one that had like this specific text, because Trick Moon just said when it's placed on back row center. But um Anyways, you know, when uh, it fits in the back row, center, rear guard, auto. At the end of the battle, you're grade through the vanguard B here when its card name attacked. By soul blasting one and resting this unit, choose two of your rear guards and calm as each other and exchange their positions. So we can swap rear guards for attacks, which is great. The only downside is the vanguard doesn't get boosted, and considering where your CB is going, he probably won't get the skill off either. So that kind of sucks that your vanguard is going to be a 13k. But on the bright side, you get multi-attack out of it. The thing I question, though, is like, even all the way up to set 13... We have not gotten cards at all that actively support her. Like, we've gotten the Raid 2 of the Riot Line, and then we got in Flat and Fire, who, by the way, both got yeeted out of the main deck. I'm just making that clear now. Those are the only two support cards that actually supported her skill, and everything else, like, directly supports in the sense of they are rear guards. Like, that, that's kind of how it works, and it's kind of sad that what we all thought was the most important card just is not at all and again i say but she just casually forgot about it. but she is treating this like it's gen x from yuko that's what it is like they're just recre recreating the idea of how the deck works every single time they revisit it anyways four four out not bad it is a simple soul blast and this deck does have soul to spare so being able to swap around rear guards for multi-attack is great especially because she doesn't cost cb but that's a four of then we have our last grade one in the deck yeah this is literally the only grade one we really need because it's searchable and we can just call it the rear guard and that is one of in the ride deck none in the main deck of galactic b hero Artitech Passel. grade one boost 5k shield 8k base auto and placed on vanguard circle search after one base card reveal it put it to hand and shuffle your deck and during continuous rear guard during about this unit boost the b hero on his card name this unit's flat k power so 13k all around, not bad. Also, never pay attention to the English arts on some of these, except for one of them, because the English arts, I guess, came out before they got the B Hero Rata, and they just chose not to, not to change it for some reason. But, you know, making a 13k booster of his B Hero is great. Again, I don't remember if this deck can get from Soul or not. I'm pretty sure it can't. Like, I know there is a card that can get stuff from Drop, and if you ran it, but the thing is, it's not a B Hero itself. But either way, though, being able to boost a B Hero as a 13k booster is not bad. It's not amazing, and it's definitely not multi-attack for free. So, one of in the ride deck of our deck, Percy, none in the main deck, but still a solid grade one. And while I'm thinking about it, before I forget about it later, the reason why I thought it was called B Hero earlier, uh, well, outside of, you know, the joke, B Hero, as in, like, be the hero, but the reason why I thought it was earlier when I was building, the, when I was putting this deck onto the Google Sides, is because I thought about it. There's a ride line, not ride line, there's a line called Cosmic Heroes in Premium, you know, the Gallop stuff. And my thought process is, what if that's the reason why they're called B Heroes? Because if they were just called Heroes, or just Hero in general, because that's what their original text was. If you look at it, Hero, Cosmic Hero fits that title, which means all of these effects would be applicable to Cosmic Heroes. And I guess that would just be too broken. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like that's the only consistent reason I can think of outside of it's meant to be the joke of B the Hero. So uh, one of them in the ride deck of Pacel, none in the main deck. 
And move on to our grade twos. First one, four copies of literally the most important card in this deck. Hero Base Aegis. I still don't know what Aegis stands for. I literally tried to look at all their names to be like, does it like line up with the starting letter of each of the original names? And no, it doesn't, but whatever. Anyways, grade two set order after set orders play, put it to your order zone. You play it for free. Auto one is put into the order zone. Look at the top seven cards of your deck. You up to three cards with B Hero and their card names from among them. Reveal them, put one of them into the hand, and scout up to other two into the base and shuffle your deck. So all around pretty solid. I don't like this card though or i don't like that search ability in the sense of it either goes off well or it doesn't and what i mean by this it'll either flip me no b heroes whatsoever or it'll just flip me three persona rights for some reason or it'll flip me everything i need in one go like it's like it's a 50 50 there's no in between it's always one or the other and i don't know why it's like that but it is anyways act order zone is other skills rest this card and discard a card from your hand choose one of your scattered cards with great lesson equal to your vanguard and call it to rear guard um Towards the late game, that becomes really hard to handle, especially if you're playing against a board nuke deck, meaning you constantly have to discard cards. Even if you're discarding crappy cards like Trigger Stakota Rear Guard to get other units out of the order zone, it still kind of is costing you a hand card to get them on board. And then the other skill is Auto Order Zone. When your unit is attacked, doesn't matter if it's Vanguard or Rear Guard, by Soul Blasting one and resting it, you can choose one of your scouted cards and call it to Guard Circle. All around pretty solid, so that means you can waste less hand cards on Guarding Power and more of them on Calling for next turn. And on the mention that, it's a simple Soul Blast, which does eat in with direct foiler but this deck more or less has enough soul to handle both of them consistently to where unless you are constantly using its skill like every single chance you get you should be fine so i mean all around age is pretty solid it does get three free heroes out of deck and gets one of them to hand and then two of them into the base and then you know it can either get you rear guards or guardians so easy four for me and my main issue with this one is because it was only searchable via percy before or pass out because his original name was percy but um and that was it and then in this set, we got a new card that could actually search it out, but we'll get to that card later. Anyways, our next card is our first normal unit for the grade twos, and that is Galactic B Hero, Rampart Aspada. So, great turn set 5k shield, 10k base, auto when scouted, soul charge 1, activates when it's put into the order zone as scouted. So, downside is that's a mandatory soul charge, and this card is the sole reason why this deck almost decks out consistently, because I just will scout this immediately because got free guard power, and then lo and behold, I deck myself out with a bunch of free soul charges, and then the draw trigger doesn't fucking help. And then continues guard circle. If your order zone has a base card in it, if you have a Vanguard here, be here on this card, name my bad. Uh, it gets plus 10k shield. So 15k guard is great. That is meant to say be hero, by the way. I don't know why I forgot to change it. But 15k shield is great uh, because all you literally have to do is have a base. It doesn't matter what grade your vanguard's at, meaning when you play this on grade 2 because you got one from Passel, you can straight up just throw this on the guard circle and you will be straight up fine. But um, all around very solid. It's a free soul charge. Downside is mandatory. But he has a 15k shield to balance it out. So there's that four of to me. Then we have four copies of Galactic B Hero, Bold Salos. Yep, look at that right here. He was the first card released after um, Dianos, like was released, and he was the only support card they got in set nine. Three sets after they came out, Bold Salos was the only support card they got, and then two sets after that, they got promo, one promo, and then after that, they finally got actual support. I kid you not, Bushy straight up forgot about these guys. I, I swear to you. Anyways... Great to NSF 5k shield 10k base. The only one in English so far that actually has the word B hero on it. Auto when discarded from your hand from the cost of the ability of your of your base card. Current boss want to call this card to rear guard circle and then choose a card with B hero and discard it from your drop and scout to base. Okay, so here's the card I was thinking of earlier that can scout stuff from drops. You know, can soul boss Percy and then put them back in there. You could recycle your direct foilers and this thing, which is how I keep decking myself out or almost decking myself out. The only downside is he does eat into the CB. And again, he and the next card are the reasons why... Um, Dianos will pretty much never get off his ability, but cool, he gets to call himself back, and he can actually deliver mode. Actually, no, he can't, because it has to be specifically for the base, but still. But then also, in the sense of, you know, he at least recycles your bases, so there's that. And then, continues rear guard circle during your turn. If you have two or more bases, this unit gives us 10k power. For, uh, so, all around, pretty solid. Like, we have the searcher who guarantees it gets us one. Typically, I would draw one normally, and now we have another searcher that can guarantee it. So, pretty much always a guaranteed 20k swing, which is nice, and if you can buy it with the Vanguard skill, 25k swing. It definitely works out now with more support, because even though we have more CB eating into it, we at least have more good targets to call from his, or add to the base from his skill, and then, you know, he is consistently hitting that 20k a lot better. So, for both solos, while his CB does kind of cause problems, and I really hope we get, like, an archetypal countercharger like Volstro did, that's really really good then um you know he'll be a lot better but until then he's still good for now and he is a decent beast six or four of 
And then we have four copies of the thing that makes this entire deck so much more functional. Galactic B Hero, Amass Darnia. Because he's about to amass your Darnia. I don't know what any of that fucking means. I probably should have thought about that before I said it, but who cares? Anyways, great choice of 5k shield, 10k base. Auto when she's placed on the rear guard circle. If you have a Vanguard with B Hero in its card name and a base that was in a base that was not put into your order zone yet this turn. Soul Blast 1 and Ditch 1. Search your deck for one base card, put it into the order zone and shuffle your deck. So downside is, while that isn't a hard once per turn, you cannot use it to more than once per turn because you already put a base order into your order zone the turn you use her. However, all you have to do is have a Vanguard with B Hero, doesn't matter the grade, and it doesn't stop you from playing another one that turn. Meaning what you do, the second you get to grade 2 turn and you search from his skill, you play her first, doesn't matter what you ditch, as long as it's not the base, then check the, then get the base, put it to order zone, use its skill, get whatever, then play the one you searched from his skill, and boom, two free base, and this boy's a 20k base that turn. I kid you not, if they just stopped it here, this card would uh, actually be legit be amazing. In fact, it literally wouldn't eat into any other thing's resources. Like, it, it's genuinely that good. But then this ability exists, and this ability is good too, it just eats into the CB. And that is auto rear guard. The end of this unit attack into anything, whether it's Vanguard or rear guard. If you have a Vanguard with B here and his card name, and your orders on his three or more bases, this and this alone guarantee you two, so take that as you will. Um, Counterbots want to retire her, choose a guard a card from your base, and call it to rear guard circle. So. That's where the CB problem kind of comes in. This deck, all these abilities, by the way, don't have to require the opponent to be at grade 3. Meaning, if your opponent stupidly brought you all the way to 4 or 5 CB, you can proc off all of your deck's abilities in one go, and they will probably die unless they have enough guard to deal with that. And if they do, they'll probably go down to very low hand cards for next turn. But, uh, yeah, multi-attack allure. This is where all of your CB goes, and then whatever's left of it goes to this thing. So, I mean, take that as you will, though. It's very good. It gets multi-attack, it gets giant beat stick out, or whatever the giant beat stick put into the base, and then it itself literally gets a base for the simplest cost of a soul blast and a ditch, which will probably be replaced by the base itself. So all around, Amass Darnia is just an amazing grade too. I love her. Like, this is, I think this is Bushy's way of making up for like, I know we forgot about you guys, so here's support so we don't get riots about the hero fans. So for Amass Darnia, very solid grade two, and the hero boys will be proud to see her. Then we have our last grade two, one of in the ride deck, none in the main deck, sadly, of Galactic B Hero Wild Colston. Though again, you can soul boss it out and then just fetch it back with both Salas. Great turn set five, Kashiel, 10k base, act Vanguard Circle once per turn. Scout any B Hero card and its card in from your hand into your base to draw a card. So cool, it just replaces a card for a free draw, which is nice, and you can combo it with this thing to ditch this thing, call it back, counter blast, put something in, and then you know, call the other thing that you just put in there. Like all around pretty solid combo. And then auto vent, rear guard once per turn. When this unit is moved to another rear guard circle during your battle phase, it gives us 5k power for the turn. So cool. 15k. Again, I don't understand why this is the only card that actively is supported by this or actively supports her. It doesn't make sense. Not even the main grade three does. At this point, I don't understand what like the whole deck's point is supposed to be outside of maybe make big B sticks and just have ways of multi-attack like that that's the only thing i can understand because the main grade three feels like it does nothing compared to like what the rest of the deck does but whatever one of in the ride deck of colston none in the main deck it is a good grade two though then we move on to our grade threes. First one, three copies of Galactic B Hero. Very Kapas. Grade three, turned up for some 13k base. I love the fact that his cape has a mini machine gun on it, and that's like his actual cape is straight up like bullets, you can kind of tell. Auto rear guard at the end of your turn. Scout this unit and one card, one and a card with B Hero and his card name from your hand is the base. To draw a card and then choose a base from your order zone to stand it. We'll draw a card pretty solid because for both of these effects to go off, you have to rest it, meaning whenever you use the effects, regardless of which one you're using, I mean, most likely this one, obviously, that means you're choosing not to be defensive with this one next turn however thanks to him not only can you use it defensively next turn but it's also giving you ammo aha this is why his cape is like this but it also gives you ammo so it can um you know help you get some freebie draws going and then also make sure that you have guard power for the next turn our own very coppers is very great especially because haha get the joke but also because like he's just free like he's an amazing grade three and i love him and the only reason he's not at four is just because of space and i value multi-attack over everything else so three of very coppers just good grade three and then we have our last card in the deck, three of in the main deck, one of in the ride deck of where Wellstro was, in my opinion, one of the best grade threes Diaz ever released because his skill was so simple and so cheap and he supported the deck so well. There is Galactic B here, Unite Dianos, where I feel like Bushy knew Wellstro was coming up the next set. So they were like, we could afford to have one slip up and that was Dianos. So grade three, 200% I 13k base. 
Continuous Vanguard Circle. All your front row rear guards with B Hero and their card names get plus 5,000 power active on both players' turns. So that's cool. You know, your free 15k base beat sticks are a, a, a little bit harder to hit, which is nice. And, and make better numbers. And then Auto Vanguard. When this unit attacks, if your order zone has a base card in it, by counter blasting one until end of this battle, he gets plus 15k power. Then if your order zone has three more base cards, he gets a crit as well. Like, all around... That's not bad. 28k beat stick with double critical is great. Again, though, most of your CB goes to either her or him. So, you know, you pretty much lose out on the ability just to get that free 15k and a crit. But when you can use it, great, because that probably means you're winning and you have a bunch of big beat sticks going into your opponent. But it just feels like this does nothing to support the deck. Like, what? None of the decks says, oh, the Vanguard has to be at a certain number or has to have an extra crit. The rear guards do most of the work. And this is the only effect that, like, actually applies to the rear guards it felt like this ability could have been i don't know when it swings uh counter charge one after a certain amount of battles or something like i don't like, you get the point like it feels like he doesn't support his deck and that he is just there and like the deck doesn't support him either they're just all together by name like i i, I don't know it's just weird but he doesn't do his job horribly thanks to at least this effect but he doesn't do it amazingly either so three of the main deck one of in the ride deck and without further ado, that's it for this deck. I hope you guys enjoyed. All around, this deck is a lot better to play than it was back in, like, set 6 and set 9. Because we actually have good support, you know. We can multi-attack a lot better. We have more consistency in getting our um, B heroes into order zone. We have a lot of guard power. We have a lot more ability to get the bases out consistently. It's all and more ammo for those bases. It's all around just a very fun deck to play. So for the demos and one here, I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, just go follow Twitch. I'll see you all in the next one. Don't forget to stand up your vanguards. <laughs>